Hello and welcome back to my final build guide for 2025 and today I'm going to be showing you how to build a PC in the latest case from Leanne Lee. This is the Vector V100 Mini and it's a micro ATX case. If you see any parts you like, you'll find links to everything I've used in the description. So let's dive in and take a closer look at this case. So to remove our tempered glass side panel, there's a captive thumb screw on the back that we're going to need to loosen. And once we've loosened it, we're able to pop the panel out from the top and then lift up and away. Take a look at our other side panel, we've got this L-shaped perforation. This is to act as a source of airflow for our side mounted fans and also for fans mounted on our power supply shroud. To remove this panel, we can simply pop it out from the top and then lift it up and away. Take a look at the back of the panel, you'll see there's no additional dust filters and the end they are just going with mesh on the side. Our tempered glass front panel can simply be pulled out from the top and then lifted up and away. Our top panel can be popped off from the back and then lifted up and away. Take a look at the back of the panel, we've got an integrated sheet of mesh to act as a dust filter. Take a look at our side I.O. We've got a power and reset button, a combined headphone and microphone jack, a single USB Type-C port and two USB Type-A ports. Just above our I.O. on the side we've got an ARGB lighting strip. And on the power supply side we've got our case accessory box where you're going to be able to keep all your screws nicely organised. In terms of fan and radiator support, on the side of the case you can fit up to three 120mm fans and that's exactly what Lee and Lee have pre-installed here for you. These are reverse bed PWM ARGB fans, so they'll be bringing plenty of cool air into the build. On the rear of the case it's up to 120mm fan and again that's what Lee and Lee have installed with this 120mm PWM ARGB fan set to exhaust. On the top of the case is up to three 120 or two 140 millimeter fans and this is your only radiator mounting slot where you can fit up to a 360 millimeter radiator. It is important to say at the top why you can mount 140 millimeter fans, 280 millimeter radiators aren't supported. The final fan mounting slot is on the power supply stride where you can fit up to two 120 millimeter fans. You're simply going to set your fans on top and then you're going to use the long radiator screws that come in the case accessory box to go down through the fans and secure your fans to the bottom of the case. You'll notice on the power supply side we've got this nice cutout for bringing your GPU power cables through. It is important to say though that if you are going to install a fan here you're not going to be able to use this cutout. In terms of motherboard support, the case supports motherboards up to micro ATX and it's good to see we've got additional cutouts if you want to use a micro ATX motherboard with back connectors. If you want to go with a CPR cutter, the maximum height supported is up to 163.5 millimeters. You can see at the rear of the case we've got five expansion slot brackets and in terms of graphics card support, the maximum length supported is up to 415 millimeters. So with such large GP support, you'll be pleased to see Leon Leon included a two-part GP support bracket. So this part here is designed to go above your graphics card and this part here goes beneath it. So there's two different height positions you're going to install this in and it depends on which of the slots you're going to be installing your graphics card in. So your graphics card is going to start in the top slot working down. Out of the box this is in the right position. But if you're going to start in the second slot down, um, you're going to need to move this down. So all you would do is loosen the screw. We can then simply move the bracket down and replace the screw. And then this would be in a perfect position for a GPU that starts in the second slot down. For the motherboard that I'm using, the top PCIe slot is in the first position, so I'm just going to put this back to the stock position. Then I'm going to take a look at the bottom bit of the market. Again, we've got this rubber pad which is designed to sit underneath your graphics card supporting it. And one of the most frustrating things with GPU support practice is getting this lined up somewhere where it's not going to get into your GPU fans. So it is possible to slide this backwards and forwards. All you need to do is loosen the two screws. And then you're going to be able to slide this and get this in the exact position that it's not going to obstruct your GPU fans. In terms of adjusting the height of the bracket, there's a thumb screw on the other side of the case that you're going to need to listen. And then with it loosened, you're going to be able to slide the bracket up to where it supports your graphics card and then just tighten up the thumb screw to hold it in place. Moving to the other side of the case and you can see we've got three pre-installed Velcro cable straps to help manage our cables and we've got loads of cable tie down points throughout the case with plenty of cable ties included in the case accessory box. So it's good to see that all four of our pre-installed case fans are daisy chained together. So we've just got one PWM and one ARGB cable to plug into our motherboard for all four of the fans to work. Behind the motherboard tray we've got a dedicated two and a half inch drive mounting bracket. It's removable so we just need to remove the thumb screw. And then we're going to be able to slide the bracket backwards and lift it away. So in terms of mounting a drive to the bracket you're simply going to set your drive into place. And you can use four of the screws with a little lip rounded outside to secure the drive to the back. 
So not the easiest for me to get a good angle of this, but on the bottom we've got two further drive mounting slots, and here you're able to mount either two two and a half inch drives or a single two and a half inch drive and a single three and a half inch drive. So whether you're using a two and a half or three and a half inch drive, the mounting mechanism is the same. You're going to fit four of these little rubber pads to the back of your drive, and you're going to secure them using the appropriate screws. The thinner screws are for two and a half inch drives, and the thicker screws are for three and a half inch drives. And these screws are simply going to go down through the rubber pads and into the back of your drive. And then once you've attached four of the rubber pads to the drives, you're just going to line them up with the holes in the bottom and then push them forward to lock it into place. And again, your second drive mounting slot is at the bottom, at the front. Probably a little bit easier for me to show where the drives are going to go from underneath. So this is where I installed the two and a half inch drive. And if you want to install a three and a half inch drive, it's these holes that you're going to use. And that additional position I couldn't really get you a good shot of. Two and a half inch drives at these middle holes and three and a half inch drives at these holes out here. And you'll see we've got a removable dust filter over our power supplies intake. So the case does support full-sized ATX power supplies up to a maximum like the 220 millimeters. The only thing you're going to have to be careful of is if you want to mount drives in this second slot here. Leon Lee say if your power supply exceeds 150 millimeters, it may interfere with the drive mounting position. So you can see obviously if you're going with a three and a half inch drive, it's going to cause more interference where you should have a little bit more support before you're going to interfere with a two and a half inch drive. We are now ready to start working on the motherboard and we're going to be installing our CPU, the bracket for our CPU cooler, our M.2 SSD and our RAM before we install the motherboard in the case. To open the socket cover we're going to push this lever down and out, we'll bring it all the way to the middle of the motherboard and then we can go ahead and open the socket cover up. Holding our CPU by the edges and making sure we've got the text the correct way up, we're going to lower it carefully down into the socket. And once we're happy at sitting correctly we'll go ahead and close the socket cover down again. Then as we close the lever the black bit of plastic will pop off and we'll put it in the motherboard box for safekeeping. To install the bracket for a CPU cutter, we're going to need to remove the stock clips that each held on with two screws. Then we've got one of these brackets to go on at the top and one at the bottom. And importantly, you are going to want to install it the correct way round. So these standoffs here, you're going to want to have them towards the middle of the motherboard. Then you're going to secure it using the four screws that came in the bag with the bracket. Our M.2 SSD slots are behind this heatsink, so we'll just go ahead and push this lever. It's going to allow us to lift the heatsink up and remove it. So we've got two M.2 SSD slots on the motherboard. The top is a Gen 5 slot and the bottom is a Gen 4 slot. So all I'm going to need to do is line our M.2 SSD up with the slot and then we'll push it into place. And we can go ahead and flatten it down and this little clip is going to hold it in place. So you can see the drive that I'm using comes with its own heatsink installed, so I'm just going to leave the motherboard heatsink off. If the drive you're using doesn't have a heatsink, you can just simply return the motherboard heatsink. So we're going to install our RAM in the second and fourth slot along from the CPU, so I'm going to go ahead and open the clips on these slots. Then all we need to do is line the RAM up with a slot, and once we're happy everything's lined up, it's just some firm pressure, and it's going to clip into place. And it's the same thing with our second stick. So before we set our motherboard into the case, you're just going to want to check that all the standoffs line up with the holes in your motherboard. Now, this bottom one in the middle doesn't line up with our motherboard. It actually needs to be moved to this lower slot here. So in the case accessory box, we get the standoff insertion and removal tool. It just goes over the standoff. You can then use a screwdriver to remove the standoff. We'll move it down to that lower slot and then tighten it up. We can then insert our motherboard into the case, line it up with the standoffs at the back. And once we get the middle standoff to go through the middle hole, it's going to help hold our motherboard in place. We can then secure the motherboard to the case using eight of the screws with a little lip around the outside from the case accessory box. Next thing to do is get our case cables plugged in. Our HD audio cable is going to go into this header down the bottom left hand side of the motherboard. So we can go ahead and bring the cable through the cutout and we're going to plug it in with the HD audio text facing down the way. Next to it we've got a 3 pin 5 volt ARGB header. So we'll bring the ARGB cable coming from our pre-install case fans through and get it plugged in. Then we've got a system fan header, so we'll bring the PWM cable coming from our case fans through and get it plugged in. Our front panel connectors are going to go into the pins on the left hand side of this header here. So we'll bring the cable through the cutout and we're going to plug it in with the front panel text facing up the way. Our USB 3.0 cable is going to go into this header here. So we'll go ahead and bring it through the cutout. We'll get it lined up with the header and push into place. Our front tunnel type C cable is going to go into this header here. Now rather than bring it through this large cutout where it's going to get in the way of our GP support bracket, I'm going to bring it through this cutout here where the back connectors would come through. I can then twist it round and get it plugged into the header 
and then you'll notice when I pull the excess cable back, it's going to look much tighter than if it was coming through here. We're now ready to install our power supply and I've gone ahead and plugged in the cables that we're going to need. So I've plugged in our 24 pin motherboard cable, a single 8 pin EPS cable to provide additional power to our CPU and I plugged in a 12 volt 2x6 cable to power our graphics card. We can then insert our power supply into the case with its intake fan facing down the way. Then we'll get it secured into place before the large power supply screws from the case accessory box. On the back of the power supply we've got this smaller on off button. This main one is for turning our power supply on and off. This one is to turn our fan on and off. Now turning it off, which is currently set to at the moment, won't turn the fan off altogether, but what it will do under low power loads, the fan won't spin on. But once the load builds up, the fan will turn on. So it's like a hybrid fan mode. If you'd rather have your fan on all the time, you can simply turn this switch to on. But I would rather reduce noise when the power supply is under low load, so I'm going to leave it switched to off. At the top left of the motherboard, we've got a single 8-pin EPS power connector. So I'm going to bring our EPS cable through the cutout at the top, and we'll go ahead and get it plugged into the header. And then we'll just pull the excess cable through to the back. And then we've got our 24-pin cable, which is going to go into this header here. So we'll go ahead and bring it through the cutout, line it up with the header, and push into place. And then we've got these two cable combs we can use to help organize the cable. So just before we install our CPU cooler, I'm just going to pass the cables up and through to the back. And then as we lift the radiator up into place, I'm just going to pull the cables tight. And we'll secure the cooler into place at the top using the included short radiator screws. And at this stage, we can replace our top panel. So we've got two fan headers at the top of the motherboard. The gray one is our CPU fan header. So I'm going to bring the PWM cable camera from our fans through and we'll get it plugged in. And at the top right of the motherboard, we've got an ARGB header. So I'm going to bring the ARGB cable through and we'll get it plugged in. Next, we're going to add some thermal paste to the center of the CPU. It is included with the cooler. We need to remember to remove the plastic protection from the cool plate. And then we can go ahead and line our pump up with the bracket we've installed on the motherboard. And we just need to get a thumb screw onto each corner. And then we'll just tighten up each thumb screw and turn with a screwdriver. Next I'm just going to route all the cables coming from the pump through to the back of the case. Just below our CPU fan header we've got our CPU opt header. So I'm just going to pass the 4 pin PWM cable back through and we'll get it plugged in. At the bottom of the motherboard we've got two USB 2.0 headers so we'll go ahead and bring our USB cable through and we'll get it plugged in with the USB text facing up the way. Now the RGB cable coming from the fans and the radio that we already plugged into a header on the motherboard has a daisy chainable connector coming from it. So we'll remove the plastic cover and we'll take the RGB cable coming from our pump, line it up and push into place. And we can then remove the plastic protection from the pump. We're now ready to install our graphics card so we're going to need to remove the first, second and third expansion slot cover from the top. And we need to press the button on the motherboard to open the clip in our top PCIe slot. Next we can go ahead and line the graphics card up with the slot. And once we have everything's lined up, it's just some firm pressure and our graphics card is going to clip into place. And we'll secure it in place using the three thumb screws we've just removed. Not so easy for me to get you a good shot of this, but no matter where I put this GPU support bracket along its length, it is just catching on our last fan on the graphics card. So I've temporarily removed the graphics card and what I'm noticing, if the support bracket was this side of the bracket, it would work. So I'm simply going to flip this round. So I'm going to remove one of the screws, flip the bracket round 180 degrees, and then we'll put in the second screw again. And that means I'm going to be able to slide it to get it into the right position. So this time I am able to get the bracket slid to a position where it's in between the two fans, and then I'm going to tighten up the two screws. And all I'm going to need to do is slide the GPU support bracket up to where it is supporting our graphics card, and then we can tighten up the thumb screw at the rear. And then a very important step whenever you're using a GPU sword bracket is just check the fans can spin freely, which they can. We can then bring our 12 volt 2x6 cable through the cutout at the bottom, get it lined up with our graphics card and push into place. And then we'll just tidy up the cable with the included cable combs. Okay, last thing to do is some cable management and get the panels back on again.
So I've gone ahead and got the PC set up. If you don't know how to install Windows, the drivers, the RGB software, enter the BAS, update your BAS and adjust all your BAS settings. I've made another video that covers everything to do with setting up the PC after you've built it. And you'll find a link to that video in the description. The only thing I won't show you is how to install the software for this particular IO, but it's really straightforward. Just head over to the link I've got in the video description to download Thermaltake Segment LCD software. All you're going to do is install it and then the screen on the I.O. will work. You can customize what actually comes up on the screen, but you can change the sensors for each of the options. Take a look at our temperatures. Our Ryzen 7 9700X idled at 41 degrees and reached a maximum of 68 degrees during a 10 minute idle to 64 stability test. The Aorus Master RTX 5070 Ti idled at 30 degrees and reached a maximum of 62 degrees under load. In terms of noise, we had average noise levels of 45 decibels at idle and 60 decibels under load. The case is going to be available from today. It only comes in black and we've got an MSRP of $64.99 for the version that I've got here with the four pre-included case fans. If you don't want to get case fans with it, you can pick it up for $15 cheaper at $49.99. But I think getting four fans, three of them reverse bid, one standard for $15, that's pretty good value for money. So in terms of my thoughts on the case, given this case's budget price, I think you are getting incredibly good value for money. Build quality is excellent coming from Lian Li, as you would expect. There's no fancy options like removable fan stroke radiator brackets, rubber grommets, but Lian Li have done all the basics really well. And in terms of a budget case, you're getting a lot of really high-end features in it. So if you are in the market for a budget micro ATX case, Lian Li have definitely got you covered with the Vector V100 Mini. So hopefully you have enjoyed this full step-by-step -step PC build guide. If you have, please remember to give it a thumbs up. And if you're not currently subscribed to the channel, please hit the subscribe button as well.